I'm going to be talking about CI for microservices. So a couple of years ago, this is how Groupon.com looked. I was a web dev, web dev on Groupon.com, and uh, we grew pretty rapidly. We went from like a smallish Ruby on Rails application to, uh, can you hear me right? I'm just going to hold it like this. So we went from like a smallish Ruby on Rails application to a monolithic Ruby on Rails application. And our CI setup looked like this, just a single Jenkins master. And our tests were divided uh, among like a bunch of slaves. So nothing special. So fast forward a couple of years. And this is how our stack looks now. We have obviously gone uh, service-oriented. So we use all kinds of uh, tools and technology stacks, which is great for individual teams, but it's hard for someone who is like maintaining CI. So right now, we have around 400 jobs, and we run like 18,000 bills per week. So we were able to scale our CI infrastructure without actually scaling. Yeah. So we were able to scale our CI without actually scaling our team or infrastructure. Um, so my name is Surya Gadi Party, and I work, I build release tools at Groupon, and. Uh, so I'm hoping to talk about how we were able to scale our CI infrastructure uh, without actually scaling the team. Um, I'm hoping that this talk would uh, also touch on some of the aspects of uh, GitHub. GitHub is not just pull requests and code hosting. GitHub comes with like amazing set of uh, APIs and tools. So we'll see how we can use those in CI. So traditionally, CI has always been set up as an afterthought. Like people, either teams don't have the experience, the motivation, or the time to set up CI properly. They throw a Jenkins um, on some server and call it done. It works initially, but um, after a while, as the project grows, it tends to become slow and f flaky. And that tends to have like a strange effect on the morale of the team. So I mean, I've personally known people who have like quit their jobs because of bad CI. So, uh, so yeah, bad, bad CI, bad tools lead to bad culture, and bad culture leads to bad tools. So it's like a vicious cycle. So I'm mentioning this because to stress the import, importance of uh, setting up a good CI experience. So this is how CI has looked traditionally. There would be like a CI server, a Jenkins typically, which would pull SEM and schedule jobs on these like carefully managed slaves that are like um, configured for a particular build. So that leads to poor dev experience. People are not sure how to go about setting up their CI. They often depend on um, like teams, like admin teams, which uh, manage Jenkins. So this uh, leads to like lower motivation for, pe for people to set up their CI. And uh, this, is, this becomes all the more important in a SOA world, where people are constantly creating and destroying, destroying jobs. So this talk is about uh, self-hosting CI. If uh, hosted CIs like Travis CI works for you, great. But uh, this talk is going to be about CI, which you are hosting yourself. So uh, through my experience over the last couple of years managing CI, I was able to come up with uh, things required for perfect CI setup. I use those as like a mission statement for uh, our CI setup. So at a high level, these are the three things. It should be easy to use, scalable and secure. 
like pretty generic stuff, right? Like all web applications need that. So let's see what it means uh, in the context of a CI. So ease of use. Um, creating a job should be a push button process. For example, if uh, you must have seen Travis CI. Travis CI is, um, was an inspiration for me personally. So creating a job should be push button. As, as soon as a dev push, pushes a button, CI system should take care of creating SSH keys, allocating the slaves, uh, configuring the job. So second step in um, ease of use is clean execution environments. Often uh, what happens is multiple builds share a single CI server and they tend to flake out the builds. So the goal here should be to give the illusion that each build is running on a brand new machine that's not shared with anything else. So the third step um, in ease of use is we use GHE at uh, Groupon, so it should be tightly integrated with GitHub. By that, I mean that it should, uh, when you create a job, it should uh, create the deploy keys, it should have access to the private repos, it should have security, and it should be configured to according to the permissions of the job. So as I was saying, uh, initially, CI, like when the project starts, CI just works fine, but as the project grows, the CI time tends to grow linearly as the tests are added. So dev should be allowed to parallelize their tests pretty easily. It shouldn't be an arduous process. Um, <laughs> I'll just ignore that. So job con um, version control job configuration. So typically job configurations have been managed in a CI system. So I want CI, uh, CI configuration to get the same advantages of a version control code. For example, if someone's experimenting with, uh, with job configuration, he, shouldn't, he should be able to do it on their own private branch without breaking the bill for everyone else. And the last thing, I think GitHub, most people think that devs don't care about beautiful and intuitive UIs. And GitHub was a great example of a code hosting system whose, for me, the initial attraction was the clean, clean UI. So CI system should be clean and beautiful. So the leading uh, UI system, uh, CI systems now, like Jenkins, the UI for Jenkins was designed like a decade ago, like in 2000s. And it looks and feels like it was designed in 2000s. So metrics. Um, CI system is typically used for all sorts of things. We use it for like building, deployments. Um, so dev should have easy access to the CI metrics, like how long their builds are taking, what parts of builds are taking longer, how long their uh, deployments are taking. And it should be accessible to the devs so they can like optimize and parallelize their builds. And the last thing, um, CI should be extensible, obviously. So Jenkins was a great example of an extensible CI system. Uh, so that's my pick of CI servers because it did the mic go off? No. Um, so that's a pick of my CI servers. It's extremely extensible. It becomes all the more important for a CI system because as I said, People use CI to do all kinds of stuff. They like run cron jobs, they run uh, build systems, deploy systems. So it's uh, extremely important for CI system to be extensible. Okay, so uh, in the first slide, I mentioned how CI was traditionally set up. Each slave was carefully managed and tailored to a specific build. Uh, in DevOps world, there is a phase for this. They call it uh, pets versus cattle. Pets are the machines you carefully manage. They demand constant attention. And cattle is something that each unit is replaceable. So if 
one of the cows gets sick, you can replace it. So yeah, I like that analogy a lot, and uh, it was an excuse for me to put my pictures of cats. So those are my three cats, by the way. <laughs> So this thing is specific to GitHub authorization. Uh, this ties into security. We, um, we run lots of jobs that require PCI and SOX compliance. And uh, CI system should obviously be secure. And uh, it should tightly integrate with uh, GitHub authorization. You have already defined who has access to what. And that should translate over to GitHub, I mean CI system. For example, if you have configured um, who has access to push code, that should translate to who has access to configure your build. And the last thing is GitHub private repo support. So GitHub provides like amazing tools for uh, private repos, like it lets you create your own deploy keys. So a CI system should be responsible for managing that. So those are my high-level wish list items. So uh, as I said, I use these as a mission statement for um, managing our CI system at Groupon. So uh, let's look at, we have looked at all the problems and what we are aiming for. Uh, let's look at the solutions that are out there and how we can like put them together to create a great CI experience. So uh, this is a tool called uh, dot .ci that's um, it's something we created at Groupon. It's open source. It's at uh, Groupon slash dot .ci. Uh, in a nutshell, what it does is basically takes Jenkins and turns it into Travis CI. It's more than that, but uh, in a nutshell, that's what it does. So what dot .ci does, uh, it acts as a glue between uh, three major systems that we use, for CI, Docker, GitHub, and Jenkins. I'm going to talk more about how it um, glues all of them together. So one of the, the first things from uh, my slide was uh, push button job creation. So this is the UI for dot .ci to create a new job. So when you create a new job, what it does is goes and sets up the Git hooks, uh, uh, stores your uh, OAuth keys, and if your repo is private, creates deploy keys and stores them in its own internal database. So no manual environment setup. Uh, usually the process um, at the places I used to work was you would contact a sysadmin and they would set up a CI machine for you. That was a tedious process and that would often discourage uh, devs from creating CI builds. Uh, we used to do a custom solution for this, but uh, Docker came onto the scene and it was like a match made in heaven for CI. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about Docker for the next half an hour. No, just kidding. But um, So Docker is a declarative uh, syntax for defining your servers. And it uh, obviously goes well with the CI context. And Docker Compose in a, is another great tool. Uh, it lets you define. Um, so CI environment is usually not just one build server. It's usually. Uh, build machine and the corresponding services like, uh, like MySQL for Ruby on Rails or Redis or, yeah, one of those. So Docker Compose lets you declare your CI dependencies in a nice and declarative format. So clean environments on demand. Uh, what by this, I mean um, CI, each building on a CI server should assume that it's getting a brand new and clean environment. It shouldn't have shared state, shared ports, or um, stuff left over from previous builds. And this is a really important step for uh, avoiding flaky builds. So 
So Jenkins uh, comes with uh, many, many, many uh, solutions for this, and one of this is Docker plugin. So basically, it lets you define, um, point your Jenkins instance to your Docker uh, setup. We usually point it to our Docker Swarm installation, but you can just point it to like um, a regular um, Docker installation. So what this does is when a bill comes in, it uh, spins up a brand new Docker connection, Docker uh, container for your build. So this is another configuration screen for uh, Docker plugin. As you can see, you can like uh, define an image that you want to use as a Jenkins slave. Uh, so you can like customize uh, your Jenkins slaves to add like your company specific policies. And it also comes with uh, options to like specify volumes, uh, which is used, uh, which you can use to like define caches for your build. So uh, that was just one example. Uh, there are other examples. You can use Kubernetes, uh, Mesos, and uh, Amazon comes with uh, a brand new container service. And Jenkins has plugins to like all of these services. So if you don't want to like manage your own uh, slave farm, you can like just uh, point it to one of these instances and have your builds run in the cloud. So version control job configurations, as I said, um, people should be uh, free to experiment with their build in their own private branch without breaking the bill for everyone else. Um, so .ci lets you define a file called .ci YAML, much like Travis YAML. And it has all, it uh, basically defines your build configuration in a YAML file, which you can check into your repo. and. When a bill comes in, it checks out the corresponding .ci YAML for the particular SHA, so people can experiment with their own private branches. So easy parallelization, this is another um, important uh, things to have for your CI. So this is an example for, um, from .ci. Parallelizing your tests is as simple as specifying three keys in the run section. So when a bill comes in, in this example, it would um, parallelize it into three different groups, test, queues, and integration. So we have looked at all the solutions to these individual problems. And uh, let's see, uh, I want to present like a small example of how we can like bring all these individual tools together to make a good CI experience. So this is an example for, from Groupon. Um, this is a Ruby gem that we use internally, and we want to test it against, against four versions of uh, Ruby, and we want to test them in parallel, obviously. So, so in this example, um, each of the environment that we want to build the gem against is defined in one of these Docker files. So all the versions that we want to test against are defined in these uh, Docker files. So this is an example of one of those Docker files. So this is an example of uh, Ruby 1.9 build. So the second step, as I was saying, you need Docker Compose file to define um, your test groups. So this is an example for uh, the Docker Compose file in that repo. Here you can see uh, all the builds have been defined in four different sections. For example, Ruby 1.9 is uh, pointing towards the Docker file for Ruby 1.9, and the build means just build the Docker file. So we have defined four different sections. And the last piece of puzzle is uh, the .ci YAML file, which brings all these things together. So here you can see uh, we have defined four keys. And uh, each of these key corresponds to the Docker Compose file. So Ruby 1.9 was the key in the Docker Compose file. 
You can uh, also override uh, the command in the Docker file. Here we are doing something special for Ruby 2.2 two builds. So this is the end result. This is how it looks. When a build comes in, it was parallelized for four different versions of Ruby. Um, yeah, that's it. OK, the arrows are missing in this slide. Uh, they got lost in the conversion. So in a nutshell, when a build comes in, it comes to GitHub. I mean, when a dev checks in, he makes a commit to GitHub. GitHub fires um, a webhook to Jenkins. Jenkins spins up uh, these five different Docker containers, runs the builds, reports back the status to GitHub. Yeah, as I said, the uh, arrows are missing, so use your own imagination. So it reports back um, the commit status. I was surprised that how, like, so many people didn't know about commit status. I was not going to put this in my slide, and I realized that so many people have no idea that this even exists. So metrics. Um, this is a slide from .ci. It lets you visualize your, do, um, your build times for these various branches. You can define your own custom uh, metrics. This is an example of uh, how your code coverage was throughout your builds. And you can like filter it by lines, packages, and files. So GitHub authorization, uh, you can turn you can go to Jen once you have installed .ci, you can uh, go to the configuration screen of .ci and just point it uh, to GitHub authorization. What this would do is map, map the permissions you have defined in your GitHub repo to the, to the build. For example, if you have commit, sta commit access to the build, you would get uh, configured access to the build. So yeah, this is the final step. I want my CI system to be extensible. What this means is um, you should be able to extend individual parts of uh, your CI experience. Uh, and this is um, how you, you can script your .CI ML. Here you can see that um, you might want to run integration tests for um, if you have defined a step called integration. This .ci YAML file is basically a groovy template that gets parsed. So you can create for loops and uh, if statements. So here you can see um, you want to notify your hip chat room only if uh, the branch was master. So you can do all sorts of uh, cool stuff here. So .ci is um, extensible. So Jenkins in itself is extensible, so you can extend Jenkins by writing plugins. And .ci is a plugin for Jenkins, but you can write plugin for the plugin. So without actually having to contribute code back to .ci, you can define your own, uh, own plugins. So uh, this is an example of uh, adding a new notifier. So if you are using Slack or uh, Basecamp or whatever, you can write your own uh, custom extension. And that, um, this automatically becomes a key in the notification section of uh, .ci. You can also create your own, uh, own plugins. So this is an example of a plugin called uh, Code Reviewer. What this does is, uh, if there is a pull request, it goes through the change set from the payload and uh, looks at who committed uh, the most to those files and assigns a code reviewer automatically. You can also do stuff like um, make code comments in the pull request. If um, You can hook into the Cobertura coverage and get coverage information and make code comments to the GitHub pull request. And because um, you already are authorized to GitHub, you, you can use the same OAuth keys to make comments. So you don't have to set up a special service to do that.
Uh, this is another example of uh, a plugin that um, integrates with uh, GitHub's deployment API. I don't know if you have seen the deployments API from GitHub. It's, I think they released it like a couple of months ago, or maybe it was last year. So what this does is listens to deployment requests and um, executes builds in a predefined uh, Docker container. So as I was saying, you, um, you can define your own custom metrics. It just goes to the metric section of the UI. So um, people do all kinds of stuff uh, with CI. So you can uh, create a metric for how often your deploy is happening. So uh, let me summarize uh, what I've been saying for like last 20 minutes. Uh, the key takeaways is uh, use Docker for CI. It's great. Uh, Jenkins has like many plugins to, to make that easy to use. Yeah, just use Docker. So take advantage of uh, GitHub APIs. Uh, so GitHooks post a bunch of information in payloads, for example, chain sets, um, the pusher information, the emails of the pushers. So don't just drop the payload information. Make the best use out of it. Uh, yeah, use commit statuses. So if you're uh, using GitHub Flow, I think you should use GitHub Flow. Uh, commit statuses are great for uh, telling you if you can merge your pull requests. Use deploy keys. This is another thing from GitHub API. GitHub provides an option to create deploy keys for individual uh, repos. So if you have like um, a PCI compliant repo, for example, you can, your CI system can create a deploy key and use that for checking out code. Use authorizations API from GitHub. Um, don't duplicate the information you, that you have defined in uh, GitHub in your Jenkins. Use the deployment API. It's, um, it's a new API from GitHub that, um, that you can use to track your deployments. Uh, last thing, this is I think really underused feature of GitHub is uh, pull request comments. Use pull request comments. You can do all sorts of things for pull request. You can hook up your CI to make comments about the pull request lines that are missing uh, code coverage or not or failing like a code standard. Um, yeah, so use Jenkins Cloud APIs. Jenkins has like many plugins that you can simply point to um, any of the any of the cloud uh, infrastructures. Like you, you can point it to Kubernetes uh, go, um, cloud from Google or uh, Amazon's container service or um, DigitalOcean service. So if you don't want to maintain your own uh, own slaves, you can simply point it to one of the clouds. So yeah, that's the end of the talk. I'm, I'm planning to do a demo of uh, some of the stuff I've been talking about. Um, my name is Surya Gadipati, and that's the URL of the .ci plugin for Jenkins. And my boss asked me to put that on the slide, so we're hiring. So I'm hoping to do a quick uh, demo of uh, the .ci plugin. So here I've configured my .ci plugin. I've uh, created an application in GitHub and uh, pointed it to uh, uh, 
pointed it to my Jenkins instance. You simply have to, like, it's just a two-step process. You create an application in GitHub and simply enter the keys here. And, uh, and setting up your job is uh, a push-button process. So once you click the button, it sets up the Git hooks and the corresponding deploy key. Yeah, that's all you had to do. Now if you like make a change, let's make a change to one of these files. So that should fire a git hook. So the git hook came in and what Jenkins is doing right now is uh, spinning up a Docker instance locally. So let me do this. So if I do Docker PS, so here you can see Jenkins spun up a Docker slave on demand. So it spun up a Docker slave and it's uh, running the build on the Docker container instance that it just spun up. So here it's using the deploy key that um, it added to the database. Oops. I think the network flaked out, but you get the idea. Yeah, that was the demo. Cool. Thank you.